Hey everyone, this is Mike with Play More Games, and I know it's been a while, so I wanted to shoot a video, and I just wanted to say, I hope you're having a nice 4th of July weekend, and uh, thought I would take the opportunity to show you Grand Havoc, the latest release in the Blind Sword system. So we're just going to play uh, two turns today, and this is turn 6 and 7 of the introductory scenario. And the introductory scenario plays rather quickly because of the limited number of counters and so on. Alright. So part of me while I get back in the swing of things here. Okay. So here's the deal. This is the Battle of Perryville, which took place in 1862. And we have elements of Sheridan's division, uh, two brigades here. Moving up this road and through this orchard here, um, we need, in, by the end of next turn, to capture three victory points. There's one here, so we need two more. And they are located here, here, and then one off to the top here. And we have this division that's a little beat up, and another that's coming up through the cornfields. Uh, you can see the tail end of them here, uh, and some cavalry off to the side as well. So we don't have a lot of time to get this done. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh, we gotta take that off. Alright, so first thing up is the artillery phase, and the Union has this hex, and we're gonna fire on the flank here at the 5 cohesion unit. And I can tell you that there's 10 strength points here. We are in effective range of both guns, so we're just going to fire on the 10 strength column. And in case you haven't played a blind sword game before, you should, but it's very easy uh, to uh, learn. And now there's up to 8 blind swords games, uh, a title from GMT, 9, and then you have your various offshoots. Uh, the Shattered Union series has one title. Uh, Simple Blind Swords has one title. Uh, and then A Most Fearful Sacrifice, which is an excellent game. And probably my favorite, the Black Swan system, um, covering the three days at Gettysburg. Um, so there's 11 games with, I'm sure, plenty more on the way. Um, so we're just going to roll the dice here. And uh, let's see what we get. So we get a 62, and uh, we're shifted, so you just got to look and see the shifts. So the target is not in woods, it's in a clear hex, but we're firing over woods, so it's minus one. So we start on the 10 column, we go to the 8 to 9, and we got a 62, which is a pretty good roll. Um, so it's going to be, because of their high cohesion, an easy test. And they get a 42, which is basically going to be an effect of no result. So then the Confederate will fire back on this unit here. And they got a 16. So that's not going to be anything either. So we can pull our first chip. And uh, if you're not familiar, super familiar with this game, it's just a chip pull system, so we'll just go one at a time. Alright, so the first one is the Fortunes of War chip, which means the next chip I pull is negated. So, on cinema at the cinema mug, real fans know. Alright, so then the Fog of War chip, which is just kind of like a random event, is cancelled. So then, we just pull our next one. And it's the Union Rally Chit. So we can play it or hold it. And what we're going to do is we're going to play it on this group here. So we're going to try to rally them. So basically we need a three or less. And we get it. So the rally event, normally to rally them, oh, they have to be at least three hexes away. So we'll, we'll choose this one instead. We'll keep the result and flip this one. One of the benefits of playing solo is you can kind of fix mistakes like that and not really have to clear it with anyone. You know, it's just what I want to do. 
Okay. All right. So next door, Sheridan. So in this game, Sheridan has two divisions. If you're not familiar with Blind Swords, this is a good uh, uh, segment to take a look at. So I'm going to grab something here. So they have this really nice order of battle card here. So when you pull Sheridan, you can activate one of these three brigades. And once you've activated them, you can flip them so you remember that they've already been activated. In this game, though, there's an interesting wrinkle. The number is how many divisions, or, yeah, how many units at the end of an activation can be adjacent to an enemy. So I think that's uh, a new wrinkle in this game. Um, I haven't played A Greater Victory or Thunder at Dawn or The Day Was Ours. Um, so if it was in any of those three, um, I haven't, uh, I haven't, I, I don't know. Uh, which, um, you know, I really do like this system. I've played A Most Fearful Sacrifice the most. Um, but I also, I really do enjoy Stonewall Sword. I played that one. I did a video series for that one. And uh, Long Street Attacks. And I tried Thunder at the Ozarks as well. Um, but I have all of them. I just, uh, maybe I'll do a series on that. Anyway, so I pulled Sheridan. So now we're going to roll to see his activation number is four. So we want to see a four or less if you're the Union. And we get a two. So now we pick the red or the white division. And we're going to pick the white division um, because they're a little bit stronger. Uh, so they're going to do an, an attack. So we'll just move this guy. This is two. The cornfield is two. And then over the fence is three and into this hex is four. This guy will go four to here. Move this guy into contact here. And then we have this unit. One, two, three, four. Actually, before we do all that, this guy you do fire combat first. This guy will shoot from this hex, and since he has rifles, that'll be on the five column. So we'll just shoot at that hex, and we'll know that this happens before movement. And actually, I get a pretty good result of 46 on the five, and we're also, yeah, 46 on the five is an easy test. This unit is supported. Uh, so that's not going to do anything. Alright. So this guy was back here. One, two, three, four. Alright. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we are going to do what's called a close combat and we are going to um, have the uh, Missouri unit be our lead unit. And then we can use defensive fire. So first we're going to be attacking this unit. So they get to do defensive fire with a 6. And they get a 13 which is nothing. And then the Liddell unit with the 7 gets to do supporting defensive fire which is going to get cut in half so it's modified to a 3. And they get a 12, so that's not going to do anything. So then we have these two attacking that hex. So we have a 17 to 6 for odds, so that's basically going to be 2 to 1. Our morales are going to be the same. So we're 7 shifted twice to 10 to 11. Um, there's no steep slope
Okay. Um. They are on a upslope though. So that's two shifts. So basically, it's going to work out to be even. So we'll be at seven. So we'll roll. And the union gets a 45. So that's going to be an easy test. And they get uh, an attacker deplete. They get a 14, so they get an attacker deplete and a RA2. So defending unit retreats two hexes. And they may panic. Uh, but I don't think that panic will apply here. Yeah, because there's no adjacent unit with a modified CR of 2 or less. Alright, so we can advance into the hex here. So now we have two of our three objectives. So we need either this one or the one down the road there. Uh, so we put Sheridan back in the cup because he's got one other division that we can use. Now we pull sharpshooters. So basically this is a uh, free shot with the Confederates, so we'll choose them. And they get one shift to the right, so they'll be on the 8 to 9. And they roll a 62, which is really good. <clears throat> it's going to be a medium test. A tough test. And they get a 62, uh, which is a break and a retreat one. So I have to roll to see if they break. Uh, yep, so they are going to the broken box. Okay, so tough results for the Union. And we pull Sheridan again, so now we'll see if we can activate his other group. And they rolled a 2, so they can. And we're going to put them under attack orders. Or, we're going to do a rebuild real quick. So, I think... And one of the reasons I have to look this up is because the rules are different in, um, yeah, okay, the rules are different in Most Fearful Sacrifice, so we'll take that off. And this one, now that it is at least three hexes away, we can roll and we need a one here. And we didn't get it. Uh, so that's Sheridan. So he'll be able to, that's probably as good as he's going to get for his final push. And then we pull the Union Firefight shit. Um, so this unit will shoot here. Uh, actually, it can't. Um, it can shoot here. So that's what we'll do. Uh, nope. That's just too low, I can tell you right now. 
Now we have Buckner. And Buckner gets a 4, which is not great. So basically all he can do is fire combat, so we'll try to return fire here, because that's the only one that can. Uh, 52, that might do something, so this is going to be a 3. 52 on the 3 is a routine test. So we got a 33, so it does have to retreat 1. Um, this would cause it to be overstacked, so it has to go back to there. Okay. Next chit is the cavalry. Let's see if we can activate the cavalry. And we can, thankfully. So, the cavalry will go uh, over the wooden fence, which is going to be plus two, through the cornfield, or into the woods is probably easier. Three, four, five. And this is a maneuver order. One, four, seven, eight. So they have up to nine. One, two, five, eight. And then we can get to here for nine. So if they get the chance to activate again, they might be able to do something next turn. Okay. But that's the whole... Oh, actually, there's one last chit. I didn't see it there. The Rebel Yell chit. Uh, which we're not going to use. Because uh, we don't want to get pulled out of position and create an opening for the Union. Uh, okay. So now I am assembling the, the cup. for the final turn. And there's some bookkeeping on the other sides. I'm moving the broken units down the track, but since this is the uh, last turn, uh, it won't matter. Oh, actually, yeah. This is the last turn, turn eight. Unless I forgot to move the turn marker. I feel like I might have, hmm. Oh, we'll just say, uh, we'll just say that this is the last turn here. And actually, this video is already 20 minutes long, so um, what I'll do is I'll end it here. That was just a quick little example of how this game system works. I hope it's enough to whet your appetite and maybe encourage you to purchase this or one of the other games in the system. Um, it won't be five months before my next video, I promise. Um, I want to, after I finish this scenario, I'm going to set up the, um, the, main, the main event. And maybe I'll play a little bit of that for you. So anyway, this is Mike with Play More Games. Have a happy fourth. Bye.